What's up welders? In this video I'm going to teach you how to do a mitre polish in the stainless steel with the basic tools that you'll have in your shop. This is part of the build series of the bar table and stools where I walk you through each step with no detail left out. I've put a link to the bar table and stools project in the top right hand corner now or you can check it out in the description below. This is Welding Empire where you learn welding while following along in the projects I build or you build them too. From hobby to hustle, start your welding empire. The items I'll be using are a backing pad, 750 watt Makita 5 inch grinder, 80 grit sanding pads, 120, red and blue woven pads, a grey unitized disc, low tack painter's tape, extremely aggressive sanding pads and a respirator. Make sure you haven't used any of the abrasive pads on other materials or you will contaminate the stainless. Here's a piece of stainless pipe that had carbon steel sparks hitting it. It looks good until it's exposed to the weather. The same thing will happen from contaminated abrasives. Secure the job to the bench. If it's sliding around, you could be marking the other side and you may not get the best finish from the work moving around. To knock the weld down as quickly as possible, I go with the 80 grit. Keep the sanding pad on the weld to avoid digging into the parent material. Keep the heat down by applying a little pressure to the stainless steel, otherwise it will get hot and sink. Other videos on YouTube sew material twice as thick as this because it's easier. Spray with water every so often or have three or four mitres to be polished at the same time. You can save time by not switching pads and letting the other mitre joints cool down. This part of the polishing takes the longest because the most material is being removed. Because the grinder is 10,000 RPM, I can't use soft backing pads with Velcro that attach finer grit sanding pads. If you're buying a backing pad, try and get the one with the ribs in it. It extends the life of the abrasives by reducing the heat. Don't move on to the next grade of abrasive until you've removed all of the sanding marks from the previous. As you're polishing, try to keep the abrasive lines in line with the 180 grit grain finish. And in between each abrasive, spray with water and wipe clean to remove the sanding dust. As you can see from the paper towel, there is quite a lot of abrasives left on the grain that will contaminate your finer grade. The unitized disc is the final going over with the grinder. It will be getting rid of the blue non-woven disc lines. It will be close to being a mirror polish with fine scratches in it. The hand pad will easily remove these. Always keep your abrasives out of the way, otherwise they run the risk of being contaminated with the particles from what you're working on. And when you go to use them on the job, you'll be scratching material and you won't know why. When applying the tape, put a couple of layers on it and keep a close watch of the edge of the tape as it wears out quickly. This process takes around 10 to 15 minutes per mitre. It takes longer with the basic equipment on such thin materials because of the heat generated. I'll be posting a second video of a small outlay on a few tools to halve the time. A professional burnisher used in a lot of the videos won't give you any change out of a thousand bucks. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm going through the steps too fast. I post these videos to you, the person, clicking on the like button and subscribing to my channel and I want it to be helpful. The bell icon means you'll be notified of my new videos being posted, which is once a week. Once you've established a good grain on both sides, if you're not happy with the definition, use a single layer of tape and use a piece of stainless as a backing pad to give the sharpness desired. The outside edges should be done last just in case you accidentally go off the side and mark it when you're doing the mitre. Just use the 120 grit disc and the red non-woven pad, finish off with the unitized disc and quickly go over it with the hand pad. This is the easy part from here on out. For the inside corner joints, I use a drill mounted polishing wheel and a coarse cutting compound. I have the links for as many of the abrasives I could find in the description below. To finish the inside corner, go over it with the hand pad with a hard backing block to give a crisp grain quickly. Thanks for watching the video to the end. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice.